So you're thinking about moving to Ponte Beach or Beach, Florida, but you're not sure where things are at. How far are we to the airport? Uh, where's the nearest shopping? Where is it at on the map? How is it in relation to Jacksonville? So in this video, we're actually gonna take you into my computer. We're gonna go into Google Maps and we're gonna give you a walking tour around Ponte Vedra Beach. So that way you can familiarize yourself where things are at, how far it takes to get to certain things. And um, that way, when you come into town, you already have a little bit of uh, familiarity with where things are located. And then this way you could spend more time hunting for the house and spending time looking for the types of properties that you're looking for. Stick with this to the end and we're gonna show you a drone tour of Ponte Vedra Beach from the beach side and then also going up and down Ponte Vedra Beach Boulevard. The cool thing about Ponte Vedra Beach Boulevard, it is one of the most exclusive uh, neighborhoods and drives in all of Northeast Florida and you're absolutely gonna love it. And we're gonna get after it right now. If this is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about living in Jacksonville area and specifically the Ponte Vedra Beach area, then click on subscribe, tap the bell for notifications so you'll be the first to know of all the changing market conditions here in the Ponte Vedra Beach area. Hi, my name is Chris Snow with the Florida Coastal Team and my team and I, we get calls, texts and emails every day from folks just like you who are looking for help making the move to the Ponte Vedra Beach area and we absolutely love it. So whether you're looking at making the move in the next few days, the next few weeks, the next few months, just give us a call, send us a text, send us an email, or you can book a private Zoom call. All of our contact information is at the bottom and we can help you make that smooth move here to the Ponte Vedra Beach area. So as I said in the opening, we're gonna go into the computer, we're gonna jump in and do a map tour and show you where everything is located in Ponte Vedra Beach. So that way you can familiarize yourself with it and we will get to it right now. All right, so we're gonna jump into it right now. I've got the Google map open up and we're gonna show you where Ponte Vedra Beach is, where its location to downtown Jacksonville, to the airport, all of that good stuff. So just a little bit of quick background again with Ponte Vedra Beach, let me just outline that area. We're talking about this area right here. And this actually goes all the way down to just north of the Volano Beach area. And this is what we would consider Ponte Vedra Beach. Now, I don't want you to get, sometimes when people see Ponte Vedra Beach, they think Ponte Vedra and Ponte Vedra Beach are the same thing. When we talk about Ponte Vedra Beach, that is right in here in this area that we have outlined. This area right over here, as you cross over the intercoastal, it says Nocatee, but if you look on your map or you look at an address, any of those properties that are in that area will have a Ponte Vedra address. We're not going to be going over Ponte Vedra today, just Ponte Vedra Beach. So just this area right in here, east of the intercoastal waterway. So let me get rid of that so that you can see that. And Ponte Vedra Beach is about 30 minutes from downtown Jacksonville. So you see downtown Jacksonville right here. And how you get to that is going out 95 and then out Butler Boulevard to get down to Ponte Vedra. It's about 30 minute drive, right about 25 miles to downtown Jacksonville. And if we zoom out of that just a little bit more, we can show you the distance to the airport. The Jacksonville International Airport is gonna be right up in this area, right up here. So again, from a time standpoint, that's about 45 miles. It's about a 45 minute drive. Quickest way to get there is to take the outer belt 295 until you get to J. Turner Butler, and then that's gonna take, and again, drop you in right in Ponte Vedra Beach. So that is the quickest, most easiest way to get to the airport. A lot of people in Ponte Vedra Beach, they spend a lot of time commuting out of Jacksonville International Airport. There are flights going in and out on a regular basis. Very easy airport to get in and out of. And it's not, it doesn't take you very long to get from Ponte Vedra up to the airport. Again, about 30 miles. I would prepare for about 40, 45 minutes, depending on where traffic is, what time you're leaving of the day. So again, when we look at Ponte Vedra Beach and we're looking at that area east of the intercoastal waterway. So let me zoom in on that just a little bit more. And we're looking at the Ponte Vedra Beach area. We are focusing on this area right in here. And when I look at this and we look at the statistics, there's about 29,000 people that live in and around the Ponte Vedra Beach area. That's what the, uh, the statistics show. That's what the uh, last census was. When you look at just the greater area just outside of there, that population bumps up a little bit. But again, that's pulling in 
that little area of Ponte Vedra that's not considered Ponte Vedra Beach. But Ponte Vedra Beach itself, about 29,000 people live in that area. And now when we take a look at the coastline of Ponte Vedra Beach, the great thing is, is if you love the beaches and you love water, there are about 19 miles of beaches that are considered in Ponte Vedra Beach and South Ponte Vedra Beach. And uh, that takes us from this area right up here all the way down the coastline, right to about this area, which gets into, now we're starting to get into that Bolano Beach area. But all of this is considered Ponte Vedra Beach and South Ponte Vedra Beach. So about 19 miles of uh, beach line. So plenty of places that you can go out and enjoy public beach access and, and really get a uh, great day out on the beach, whether you like to fish, whether you like to you know jog or walk up and down the beach, if you just like to look at the uh, sunrises uh, you know, over the uh, Atlantic Ocean. A lot of people like the pier fishing and like to do beach fishing, plenty of that up and down there. And so uh, again, Ponte Vedra, plenty of, um, plenty of beach line, about 19 miles of that. The next thing I like to look at when we start to look at our map tour is uh, where, where does the traffic pattern, where are people going in and out of? So let's, uh, let's zoom in a little bit more on our map here. And when it comes to Ponte Vedra Beach, as you can see, because we have water on both sides, you have the intercoastal waterway right here on the east side of Ponte Vedra, right over here. And then we've got the ocean. That leaves us really only one thoroughfare. If we want to get to downtown Jacksonville, there's only one road coming in and out. And so where you're going to find a majority of your traffic is going to be from this point all the way until you get to JTB. And then along J. Turner Butler or what they call the 202, you're going to find traffic all in this area. And what's happening is, is everyone is leaving around the same time. If they're going, whether it's over to the Mayo Clinic uh, here in the Pablo Beach uh, or the Pablo Creek area, um, or they're going to downtown Jacksonville, or they're stopping off here in that Southside Boulevard where there are a lot of um, corporate uh, headquarters and, and uh, business offices. This area right in here along the 202 and the uh, northern part of A1A as you get up to Butler Boulevard and the 202, that's where you're going to find a majority of your traffic. You may end up with, you know, a 15, 20, 25 minutes uh, waiting to, uh, to get on to Butler Boulevard. Um, so just prepare yourself. But if you're going to find any traffic in Ponte Vedra Beach, it's going to be right along in here. And then as soon as you get a little bit further south, not as many people are going south in the morning. So you'll find a very quick commute that if you want to go down into St. Augustine or get to Volano Beach, you're not going to really have any traffic from that standpoint. All right. So again, let's go back and take a look. Um, when you look at Ponte Vedra Beach, you have the beach side here on the east, uh, the east of A1A. You have the Intracoastal Waterway. Um, and again, that creates a, a, a small area for all the housing, all the uh, restaurants, all the shops. All of that is in a somewhat condensed area, right, uh, as we look at the map here. So I'm going to outline that again. So your intracoastal waterway right here. You obviously have your ocean right here. And so a majority of our housing is going to be right along here, west of A1A and east of the Intracoastal Waterway. So this is where you're gonna find a majority of your housing. You will find some housing east of uh, A1A, but not a whole lot. And the, uh, uh, the properties that you find that are east of A1A, they're gonna sell for a lot more than those properties that are on the west side of A1A. So when we look at the shops and we look at what are some of the points of interest, um, the one thing that I always like to take folks to and, and, and point out is the Ponte Vedra Inn and Club. Now, the Ponte Vedra Inn and Club, uh, it, it was developed out, uh, opened up in the early 1920s, and it's hosted movie stars, politicians, all kinds of folks. And it was a resort destination that people would come from all over the world to come right here to Ponte Vedra because the beaches are right there. And it's just a great, elegant uh, inn and club. And uh, they've got a spa, they've got golf, they've got tennis, everything right there. And let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see where we're at. And it's just right in this area. It's in the northern part of Ponte Vedra, just east of A1A, right along the ocean. And so whether you're going there for vacation or you have some friends that want to come in and stay, 
you can either put them up at your house or if you want to give them a nice day, you know, let them go right there to the Ponte Vedra Inn and Club. It's an experience that is well worth it. And it's interesting because when I graduated from college, the first company that I went to work for, when people found out that I was from and lived in and around that uh, Ponte Vedra Beach area, so they would ask me, you know, do, are you familiar with the Ponte Vedra Inn and Club? And I'm like, yeah, I work not far from there. And they would they would tell us me stories of uh, their national sales meetings that were held there. They absolutely love it because it was a great place to bring themselves and their family and it was spread out real well. So it wasn't like traditional hotel, a, a traditional hotel that you know, you, you you actually stayed in condominiums and, and villas that are right there along the ocean. So the Ponte Vedra Inn and Club, just a great place to go and look. They've got, like I say, the spas, they've got the golf courses. Um, you can walk up and down the beach. Uh, you also have some private beach clubs that are separate from there. Uh, and that's where you look at like the Cabana Club. And then you've got other hotels, the, the Lodge and Club. Uh, and all of that's here on the southern part of Ponte Vedra Boulevard. And the cool thing is, is that a lot of these homes that are in this area were built in the 50s and 60s. And so you have a nice mix of older homes. And then some of the older homes that were a little bit smaller have been torn down. And people have put these multi-million dollar mansions uh, right beside these old homes that were built in the 50s and 60s. So the architecture in and around that Ponte Vedra uh, Inn and Club and, and east of A1A, it's really, really cool. And as you're driving up and down Ponte Vedra Boulevard, you'll see some of the most expensive homes in all of Northeast Florida and some of the most expensive homes in the state of Florida. So it's a really cool drive when you're going up and down Ponte Vedra Boulevard, uh, which is this, oops, let me. So as you're driving up and down Ponte Vedra Boulevard, right along in here, again, just one of the neatest drives that you'll have a chance. And if you stick around to the very end, you're gonna see some driving tour and some drone tour of that area. All right, so the next thing I want to bring your attention to is that Ponte Vedra does have some shopping. They, they've got the shops at Ponte Vedra. They've got Sawgrass Village. We'll go to those in just a second. But a majority of the people, when they are looking at going shopping, they are going to go to the St. John's Town Center. And where that is located is going to be about 10 minutes away. You know, there are some small shops and there's some nice boutiques and stuff like that in Ponte Vedra. And the great thing is, is where Saint, um, where Ponte Vedra Beach is located, it is a very quick 10, maybe 12 minute ride uh, right up Butler Boulevard, uh, right here to the St. John's Town Center. And that's where you're going to do all your major shopping. You've got Macy's, you've got the Apple Store, you've got uh, Restoration Hardware. So all of your major brands, every place, the Lululemons, all those great places are going to be right there at the St. John's Town Center. So um, again, uh, when you live in Ponte Vedra, you're only about 10, 15 minutes away and uh, it's a quick pop over there, quick pop back. So Sawgrass Village is a great place for shopping and dining. It's really built up over the last 10 years. Uh, they've done a great job of bringing in some great anchor stores, some great restaurants, and some really cool niche shops and, and mom and pop type boutiques that are right in there. And uh, it's just a real quick, easy way to get in and out. It's right off of A1A. And as you see here, you see the Sawgrass Village. You've got a public, so you've got you know great grocery store shopping. Um, some of my favorite places there, Nona Blue, great uh, upscale bar and grill. Uh, you have the Metro Diner. I'm a huge breakfast fan, so Metro Diner is one of my favorite places to go. My daughter and I, we absolutely love their uh, croissant French toast. That's what we go to and get every single time that we're there. And then the Aqua Grill. And one of the things you notice, this nice big lake that's out here just creates a great atmosphere to go and do outdoor dining because our weather's great most of the year. So you can go sit outdoors, you know, have a great view of the lake um, and just have some really cool restaurants and shops to go to. Um, as you go a little bit further south, two great places that I like going to. One, uh, is Pusser's uh, Bar and Grill right here. Again, it's outdoor dining, indoor and outdoor, but outdoor, nice on a great lake. And then right beside there, you have the Ruth's Chris Steakhouse. So if you're looking for a fine dining experience, you're looking for that upscale um, uh, evening out on the town, Pusser's and Ruth's Chris are going to be your go-to places there. Now, the other place that I like to bring people's attention to, we've got Sawgrass Village right here. And let me... Uh, I like that. So again, we've got the whole Sawgrass Village here. And then we've got the Pusser's and Ruth's Chris right in here. The Sawgrass Marriott Golf Resort and Spa, again, another great place. If you want traditional hotel type staying, 
It is upscale hotel. A lot of times when people are coming in for the Players' Championship, they're going to go stay right there at the Marriott. It's very convenient. They run shuttles back and forth. If you're going to make a golf trip weekend, if you're not going to the tournament, but you're coming during a, a, a time when the tournament's not going on and you want to just play golf there. So if you're looking to go play golf, you're going to have a great two great golf courses that you can play right there. You have the, the TPC Sawgrass, which that's where everybody wants to go and everybody knows about the Island Green, the 17th hole, playing the Island Green. It's a great golf course. But the sister course that's there is also a great test of golf, great uh, location, and that's the Valley course uh, at Sawgrass. So either one of those are going to give you great, uh, great options for golf, and it's a great golf weekend getaway. And the cool thing is, is if you're not a golfer, they do have the spa that's there. So if you want to make it a spa day, you can certainly do that. You can pop up to the Ponte Vedra Inning Club, enjoy the spa there. So just enjoy both of those. All right, so that is uh, that takes us in and around where the Players' Championship, TPC Sawgrass, Sawgrass Village, all of that area, that's where a majority outside of the Ponte Vedra Inning Club, TPC Sawgrass is really what has helped elevate uh, the desire and, and people's familiarity with the Ponte Vedra Beach area. All right, the next thing I want to bring your attention to, one of the uh, great places that all the locals like to go down to, and that's Michler's Landing. Uh, that is a uh, public beach access area. It's right at the very end of Ponte Vedra Boulevard. And so if you like walking along the beaches area, you like going out, seeing the porpoises, uh, you're going to be able to find all of that right here at Michler's. Uh, they've got showers, they've got um, uh, just places for people to change. So they make it real easy and convenient. And it's a great public beach access there. And uh, the great thing is, is that it's the, on the southern part of town. So you're not going to find nearly as much traffic. Now, as you go further south along A1A, you'll find all kinds of other private uh public slash private beach accesses. So you've got plenty of places that you can pull off. There'll be public beach access there. There'll be a walkover across A1A, but Michler's is probably the easiest place to get on and off the beach uh, right there in Ponte Vedra Beach. And then not too far from Michler's Landing, you've got the Ponte Vedra Concert Hall. And so if you like just going and seeing uh, different acts that are coming out there, local blues, jazzy stuff, uh, you like um, uh, classical music, you're going to be able to find that they have uh, something going on usually two or three times a month there at the concert hall. So depending on what kind of music you like, you're going to find something right there at the Ponte Vedra concert hall. As I stated earlier on, again, the Intracoastal Waterway, if you watch our pros and cons of Ponte Vedra Beach, one of the things I noted is the waterway life, the Intracoastal Waterway. Obviously, we've got the ocean and that has its own kind of vibe and feel and what people like to do along the ocean or at the ocean. But if you love the water, obviously we've got the beach on the east side and you could do everything that you do on the beach side, but then you've got the Intracoastal Waterway right here on the western side. And that runs basically from Ponte Vedra. It goes, you know, obviously it's, it's just north of there. But as it comes into Ponte Vedra Beach, um, you have this great waterway that has its own lifestyle. And along the Intracoastal Waterway, you can dock at different restaurants and places along the way. So some of my play, uh, favorite places there are going to be Barbara Jean's. Uh, so if you like that uh, home style seafood, they are ama again, amazing crab cakes. That's kind of what they're known for. Uh, you've also got the Valley Smoke, so great barbecue right along there. And probably one of the best fish places and seafood places is going to be the Ponte Vedra Fish Camp. So all of that is right along in this, and you can take your boat, dock up. You know, uh, if your if your boat is in your backyard, uh, you take it uh, right up the Intercoastal Waterway. You park at the the restaurant. You know, have a great day. You can uh, pop back up, get down to St. Augustine, take it to downtown St. Augustine. So this Intercoastal Waterway just gives you so many different opportunities for you know just enjoying the day enjoying the day out on the boat and having plenty of places to see along the way without just sitting there and you know not going anywhere all right and then the last thing i'm going to show you here on the map it are going to be really where some of the neighborhoods are okay um majority of the housing as we say it, it uh, stated is going to be here east of a1a now, most of these homes on this side are gonna be a little bit newer, probably built in the mid 90s, all the way to brand new construction now. So you still have new homes that are being constructed, especially in the Southern part of Ponte Vedra Beach. And then as you go across A1A, you've got a little bit older homes. Uh, so you'll find a little bit more traditional block homes. A lot of these homes on the east side of A1A, built in the 50s and 60s, but as we stated a little bit earlier, a lot of times people are coming in, knocking those homes down, putting bigger homes, newer homes, 
homes. So it's a real cool design to see in each of those. So some of the neighborhoods that people absolutely love uh, here in the northwest part of Ponte Vedra Beach up in this area is going to be Marsh Landing. That's going to be a private golf and country club. It's got its own little marina. Uh, so if you have a boat, you're going to have an opportunity to, uh, to be inside of a golf neighborhood that actually has the ability to uh, host your boat. And then uh, right along in this area, you have Sawgrass Country Club. And there are some great neighborhoods back in there. There's three different golf courses that are in there. And then right in this area, you have the TPC, and uh, that is, um, again, where the Players' Championship is uh, is hosted. But this whole area, there's uh, great uh, neighborhoods in and out of there, all these little neighborhoods, and it's basically called the TPC at Sawgrass. And then as you go a little bit further south, uh, one of the best neighborhoods down in this area, and it's a golf neighborhood as well, it's called the Plantation at Ponte Vedra. There are houses that are still vacant lots, so if you want new construction, you can build privately down there. And um, as you get over in this area, as you get over into the Nocatee area and going into Ponte Vedra, so really the main three, four neighborhoods that people are gravitating towards, uh, the Marsh Landing uh, Country Club, uh, the Players' Championship there, the TPC, you also have Sawgrass Country Club, and a little bit further south, you've got the Plantation at Ponte Vedra, all private golf clubs, all with their own style and appeal, gated communities. So those are the neighborhoods that uh, people are gravitating towards. And then there's all kinds of other neighborhoods that are outside of golf communities, lots of little ones. You know, there's not huge, huge developments. Those just happen to be the biggest ones uh, that you'll find there in Ponte Vedra Beach. So I hope you found this map tour helpful. If you've got questions, if you're thinking about making a move in the next few days, the next few weeks, the next few months, again, give us a call, send us a text, send us an email, book a private Zoom call. All of our contact information is at the bottom and we would absolutely love to call you neighbors.